Hi, and welcome to another edition of Ask Dr. Darwin, where you ask questions and we get you in answers. Today we have a special coaching session where I'm going to be working with a couple of my uh, GPR residents that are applying to pediatric dentistry. And for those of you that don't know, uh, Match Day is coming up uh, not only for other residencies, but more specifically for the pediatric um, people who are applying to and interested in pediatric dentistry. So we're going to be talking a little bit about <clears throat> some strategies and some tips to get uh, to get prepared for tomorrow. Tomorrow's a big day. So um, I'm going to have you guys kind of go around the room and just introduce yourselves and uh, tell me, uh, just tell me real quick why pedo for you. And then uh, we'll go into the uh, tips and go from there. All right. So, Dr. Isa Gary. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Isa Gary. And uh, I am still because I enjoy it. I love kids. And I think I have the right temperament and the skills for it. Awesome, awesome. How long have you known you wanted to be a pediatric dentist? For about two years. Good. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Next, Dr. Uh, Dr. Lung. Good morning. I'm Dr. Lung. Um, I applied because it was my passion, it was my calling, and I just love being a part of the all aspects of a child. Like, um, I was interested in pedo maybe about three years ago. Nice. Awesome, awesome. And Dr. E.K. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. E.K. Um, I applied to PEGA because um, this was my interest. That is the um, population I'll prefer to work with to continue my dental career. Awesome, awesome. And, and I want to congratulate you, you three. Uh, you know, every year we have a, a, a lot of uh, interest in PEGA whether it's coming right directly from school or once or an interest that's been developed uh, right uh, during a resident, like a GPR, AGD residency. And it's one of the fastest, fastest growing and most popular uh, specialties, at least at, over these last five to, uh, to six or seven years. So it's a lot of competition out there. There's, uh, I think there's less than 300 spots, maybe, yeah, about 300 spots or so. So it's really fierce. So, Today's uh, session is talking about getting prepared for tomorrow. What happens tomorrow um, on match day? Um, have you thought about different scenarios, whether it's uh, you got number three on your list and you're going there, you match there, or whether or not um, if, if you're unfortunate to match on this particular cycle, what are you going to do? What are some strategies and things that you can do to uh, fulfill or or get us get a spot at a particular location or program. So, as you all are aware, tomorrow morning I, I don't think it's midnight, but I think it's it may be very very early, maybe before eight o'clock a.m. For the three of you that have participated in match in programs that are match programs, you're going to get a notification tomorrow um, as to where you matched which program matched with you, whether it be your first selection, your second, your third, or your fourth. So it's a very exciting day. It's a very <laughs> nervous and anxious day for, uh, for many of you. Um, so keep in mind, the, the program that you match with is the, pro, is the best program for you because that's the program that's going to, going to train you going to get you prepared to, to become board certified. So uh, just keep that in mind as, as you anticipate tomorrow's results. But also when we're talking about tomorrow's results, we also have to have a plan of, a plan of action if for some reason <clears throat> you're not successful in matching uh, this cycle. So real quick, what are, what are some of the things that you guys have thought about doing Oh, what's going to happen if, for some reason, you don't match tomorrow? So, Dr. Izagiri, Dr. Lung, Dr. Ike, what, what are some of the things you guys have thought about uh, that you, you can do 
um, if you don't match tomorrow. Well, I feel like I have two options. I know that I'm a second year resident and I spent a lot of time developing my skills in GP. So, and I, and I also have my passion for pediatric dentistry. I feel that if I do not get accepted into this cycle, um, I should go out and work potentially in a in a pediatric in a pediatric setting where I could see pediatric patients and work with other pediatric dentists and apply again. You know, and I think I think that would be the best option for that would be the best option. The other option. Um, <clears throat> is to continue in, in GP. And I think that's a, and go out and work on my GP skills and be content with that. But, um, but more than likely, I, I would probably go with the first option, probably work in a pediatric. Um, okay. And then try to apply again. Good, more, good. Um, a stronger applicant. Excellent, excellent. Dr. Ike, what about you? Um, I think, um, like um, Dr. Izagari said, I concur 100%. Um, she's a second year right now. I think the option to do a second year um, GPR is on the table. Um, the GPR, uh, anything focused on pediatrics, like we spoke the other day, you know, programs that have um, more pediatric experiences with the special care um, is an option. And um, there's always the option to go into the workforce to work as a dentist, as a GP. So that is, um, come tomorrow, we'll know which one <laughs> are we going to address, address it. Absolutely, absolutely, that's good. Okay, and Dr. Lung. For me, I think I would go with what Dr. Izzigar is saying. I would probably go into the workforce. Option one would be the backup plan okay so good so <clears throat> those are all those are all uh plans of action good ones but there's one or two that you guys didn't mention that i was hoping that you guys would mention i know I, yeah yeah i was gonna mention it just now i totally forgot i'm sorry um there there are fellowship programs mm -hmm. that you could that you could go to i mean after going on my interviews I noticed there are so many um, other opportunities that you could like apply. Um, I know that there's a JF um, the Kennedy Center um, for Special Needs. They have they have a fellowship there that you could apply to, and you could that's really good. Um, Montefiore also has another fellowship program that that's also very good. You see pediatric patients and you work with the residents all the time. So I think that's also a really good option as well. So, yeah. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Those are some other avenues that's gonna help you to get into pedo. But there's still one or two that I was surprised that you guys didn't pick up on. And, and, and it deals with something that you can do immediately tomorrow. And that's, this is one of the tips that I want to share with you guys. Tomorrow, there's going to be a big match list, right? It's going to be a list, probably several pieces of paper uh, long. And on that match list, they're going, to, they're going to be, there's two lists that are going to come out tomorrow. There's going to be a list of, I'm sorry, there's actually three. There's, uh, I'm actually, there's four. But two of them are the most important. There's a list of, of candidates that did not match. And there's a list of programs that still have openings where all of their positions were not filled. Okay? Those two lists, if, if you're on one of those lists, on, on the candidate side, that other, that other list of the programs that did not match or did not fill all those positions, those are your... Are, are, is the list of that that should be your, of, of your immediate attention or the list that you need to focus on because there may be some programs that do not fulfill 
all their slots. You need to know what, what those programs are because that's a potential for you to, to, to go to a program where they need slots to be filled. So tomorrow you're gonna to be have the access to that list. Tomorrow's gonna to be a very, very busy day because all the people that don't match and all the programs that don't fill all their slots, it's gonna be a lot of communication on the uh, cell phone and, and, and office phone hotlines all day tomorrow, especially like after 12 o'clock. <laughs> people are trying to find slots and trying to find a position where they can uh, join a pediatric residency program. So one of the tips for you guys tomorrow is to get in front of that list and scan it and see where the shortages are, where the openings are. You may be able to find a position at a, at a residency program that maybe um, for some reason maybe didn't match or didn't list you on the match, but you listed them. Those, of course, are the, are the best ones because you're more familiar with those programs because you applied to them and you might have interviewed with them. But there's also going to be some programs on that list that maybe are in different parts of the country that maybe you didn't consider um, for, for various reasons. But the most important thing is knowing that tomorrow there's a list that's coming out where there's going to be programs that are not going to fill the slot. And it may be a great, great opportunity for you three to be able to um, find a program and, and, and get into it. Now, to get into that program, again, tomorrow it's going to be a lot of telephone calling. And you're going to, and the program's going to be receiving a lot of calls also. So it's, it's going to be a busy day. But basically, you would contact the program tomorrow program directors or the residency coordinators and um this process of people calling and getting their name on the list uh for interviews lots of programs will do uh, a, a group um a series of interviews post-match relating to um trying to fill that spot if you haven't already forwarded the, the past application to these programs They'll probably ask for that, uh, especially if they utilize PASS for the application process. So you're going to need to be prepared to go back into your PASS account and allow uh, program ABC to have access to your information. I'm not sure if, uh, if there's an additional cost. I, th I think there may be for um, one or two programs or more that you're allowing uh, to have passed, send your application to them, but that's how you are able to get on, you know, potentially get an interview to fulfill those slots. So keep in mind, that's gonna be a very, very important task for you tomorrow, if for some reason you're not successful this cycle and matching tomorrow. And that is something that you guys can do immediately. You don't have to wait until after residency to work in the office or do um, do a fellowship or externship. Tomorrow is, is an action that you can take immediately to get you uh, much closer to getting a spot this year, this month, or the next couple of months. So that's a, that's a very important tip, I think, for you all for tomorrow. Um, another tip <clears throat> is I think Dr. Uh, Izagiri or, or Dr. Ike mentioned it also, which is uh, doing a second year. Doing a second year specifically at a, at a GPR program that has some emphasis or has some ability for you to do some pediatric dentistry or be exposed to it. Um, Dr. Izagiri has, has had the opportunity to do that this year. And I'm sure she can share, you know, some of the, the pluses of being able, of being in that type of environment. Um, because also, depending on where you do that second year, you'll have more opportunities to be in front of the pediatric department who makes the decision for admissions. Not only that, but you, you put yourself 
uh, in the circle of other pediatric residents that have gone through that same process that, that you're going through or will go through again. So you can network with them and get some, some, some pearls and some more tips and more information about other programs. So that's really a, a plus. Uh, and I'm speaking more to Dr. Long and Dr. E.K. right now, first year residents, considering a second year program that has that, that option. Um, there's one in our area, Jacoby Hospital. They have, most of their second year residents are chiefs who have been able to get exposure in a specialty area of their choice. Their second year program is a little bit, it's, it's much more unique in the sense that I'm not sure what percentage of their time is dedicated to their, their, um, their, their specialty of interest. I don't know if it's 50%, I don't know, it may be even more, but that's a program that you wanna be looking into, I would say as early as tonight. You wanna get on the internet and look at Jacoby and their second year program to find out. Also, Montefiore, Montefiore, uh, All right. Montefiore, just like here at, at Bronx, Lebanon, Montefiore has a second year program and it has a, a second year program where you can uh, work more in pediatric dentistry. Again, you're trying to get noticed, you're trying to get some more exposure, you're trying to continue to build your CV and your candidacy for the next cycle. So I would look into programs like Bronx Lebanon and, and look into programs like Monty and, and Jacoby, at least in our immediate area, but there are also programs throughout the country that ha have a second, uh, an optional second year and or they have a more specific, more specific second year or PGY year um, that I think Dr. Uh, Izzy Gary mentioned where you have it's a special care fellowship or internship in connection with pediatric dentistry. And that, that program is uh, the Rose Kennedy uh, program. And that's here in New York. Actually, about three years ago, we had a, 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 a first year GPR resident applying to pedo. That was, it was actually his second time applying to pedo. He did it in dental school and also did it while resident. Unfortunately, he was uh, not selected in either one of those cycles, but one of the things that we recommended was try to find an externship or a one year program where you're gonna be working with kids uh, with uh, developmental disabilities or need or special needs. And sure enough, he applied to the Rose Kennedy program in the Bronx, did that for a year. Um, work, he's working exclusively with a lot of the pediatric residents uh, there and went to the OR uh, and then Subsequently, he had reapplied the third time for pedo and actually got in. So needless to say, that, 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 that experience really, really helped him uh, improve and could maybe boost his candidacy and allow him to be selected for uh, pedo residency. So something to, to, to consider also, look for programs. You may have to Google them. You may have to go through the AAPD to see if there's uh, programs that have a focus on special needs or, or it could be kids with, again, developmental disabilities and see if there's a, a possibility that you could be, uh, that you can do some training that way. I think that would probably be just as uh, important or even more invaluable than maybe working uh, in the office that has, that sees a lot of pediatric children or pediatric uh, patients. I think going to do a, a fellowship or another residency or mini residency for a year, I think that might be just a little bit more stronger than working in someone, someone's office that has a lot of uh, exposure to, uh, to pediatric patients. Um, and, then the, and then the third option, which is what I just, is just mentioned, um, working in an office or a group setting that sees a lot of pediatric dentists. I mean, I'm sorry, sees a lot of pediatric pa uh, patients. Again, that's, that could be helpful. 
Um, I've, I've heard of candidates doing that for several years. Um, I think actually Dr. Izagiri, Dr. Saliba from last year is, is doing something similar to that. She's working in an office that, that has a high volume of pediatric patients and she's working in that environment as part of her uh, pedo applicant, uh, part of her candidacy. So all of those are, are tips, but the ones I really would, would uh, we want you to focus on are the ones that are most immediate, which are things that you guys can do immediately tomorrow. Tomorrow, 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 because there's, a, there's possibly a much larger window of opportunity where you guys could enter into and strike fast um, and possibly get into pedo this cycle immediately. H had you guys thought about that? at all as far as the information about post-match and realizing that there is a possibility that some programs will not fill their slots. Had you guys thought about that or did you know about that before? I, I did. I remember seeing the list last year too when I didn't get in the first time I applied. I just got if it's something I had to log in to pass or if match emails us a list. I forget how that was presented to us, but I know I had access to it. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% either, Dr. Lung, but 100% um, sure, but that's something that you can be working on today in preparation for tomorrow. I would check match mm -hmm. and see what the, the mm -hmm. post-match instructions are. Uh, same thing with pass as it relates to um, post-match and other uses of that application. Dr. Izaguirre, you get ready to say something too, right? Oh, well, you know, it's my first time applying, so I did it. Um, I had no idea what the, that there is a list, but, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, well, like, it's so competitive, like, how many spaces are there really going to be, you know, and how far away is it going to be? Because, um, so I don't know if it's like, and I don't know if like tomorrow it's probably going to be something like you're explaining it, Dr. Hayes, like it seems like it's going to be something very involved. I need to be available. I'm going to be calling a lot of people and trying to make some really big decisions in a short amount of time. So, um, so yeah. So, like yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the wonderful world of, of, uh, of specialty dentistry. <laughs> I mean, I mean, one of the things, it's, it's going to be a busy day, but it's also going to be a, a busy rest of the week, too. So, I mean, don't, don't be intimidated by, about the effort that it's going to take. Because remember, you guys, you guys have chosen this path for, for <laughs> reasons. It's just a matter of, you know, what are, your, what are you willing to do to, to make it happen? And if it means tomorrow, you know, checking your emails, or getting that list during lunchtime and starting to, you know, take an hour away from eating and just going and starting to making some phone calls and calling people or calling programs, then that's what you have to do. Um, <clears throat> usually tomorrow is the most busiest day because everyone has the same in, uh, list and has the same level of anxiety, but uh, it's, it's, it's not going to just be tomorrow. It's going to be probably the rest of the week or even the week after that. But I will tell you that programs themselves are very antsy, too, because they don't want to have a, a position unfilled. So they're also kind of expediting the process because they want to fill that slot. So there's a, you know, they've got some skin in the game, too, in addition to you. So um, that's even more reason why you want to kind of once you get the list, if it happens tomorrow, you get the list and you want to start a, start working pretty quickly. I mean, this is this is what you guys have invested a lot of time and money and and travel and and uh, you know dedicated your hearts to these past years. So you got to finish it off. So whatever whatever it requires, it's whatever it requires. It's just it's part of the process, you know. Uh, Dr. E.K., you too, had, has that, was that something that you had considered or realized that, you know, there's that post-match list that comes out? 
Did you, were you aware of that? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, last year, I actually have experienced the practice and, you know, the rigor of calling programs. Uh, I've experienced that last year. Um, I, what I wanted to ask you was, do we forward our past application to these programs or do we just go on the portal and just give them access and pay for that? Like, I don't know how that works. If you to say, send us your information. Right. Well, I'm, I'm sure once you contact the programs that are on that list that still have slots, they probably will tell you exactly what they need. Um, but I would tell you, be prepared to um, forward your application to whatever programs are on the list that you're interested in. So I would tell you, don't wait. But I would tell you also, just be prepared to push the button to select to have ABC program uh, in New York have access to your past application. I, I think most will tell you once you contact them or whether they send you an email or return your phone call or, you, you know, you, they speak to you while you're on the phone, but they'll tell you. But I think nine times out of 10, they're going to want you to send that application over if they don't have it already. So be prepared to do that tomorrow. So any questions? we got about two minutes for some questions or things that you guys are, are thinking about. I know it's, uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a very interesting day. <laughs> uh, just want to wish everyone luck and uh, we got this tomorrow. Just to make one the very best. Same to you guys. <laughs> any other questions, Dr. E.K.? You have anything that you're thinking about or any other questions? I think it's, 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 it's just, you know, the options I have I had now, you know, taking notes and everything. I just knowing in my head, initially I had two, two options. It was work or uh, second year, but the option of a fellowship and even the first match it's very interesting because these are more things I have to really consider now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't, don't spend too much time on it because um, even those fellowship positions, they're going to be going pretty quick too. People are going to be contacting those programs. Uh, if for, for whatever reason, if they're not, uh, if they are not successful tomorrow too. So I, I, I think it's okay to consider it. But you got to act fast. Remember, it's in alignment with, with, and it's a step getting you closer to what you are, are aspiring to do. So don't waste a lot of time thinking, thinking, thinking. Just put it into action and let it play out. What about you, Dr. Long? We got about a minute left for some questions. Okay. Any other things you're thinking about or any questions you have, Dr. Izagiri or Dr. Long? For me, it was the fellowships that I had. Did not consider. I did consider the post match option, the working, the second year, um, and weight those options. But the thought of a fellowship um, is a pretty good idea. Good. So that's something to consider. Good, good. And Dr. Lisa Gary, what about you? Any other closing remarks? Oh, I think. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, I think that we did everything that we could at our point. I know I did everything I could. <laughs> yeah. Leaving it in God's hands and just hope for the best. Tomorrow can either be a day of celebration or a day of scrambling around, um, kind of mentally preparing for that. But it's definitely about. Um, I definitely think those fellowship programs are like really good, especially that Rose Kennedy one. Like that, that one is like really good. Um, I will make lots of phone calls and then with the whole post match thing and it's <laughs> a lot. So yeah, I'm it is. <laughs> I would also just add.